What's going on YouTube and welcome to Goal Line Hockey. It's Kevin Forte and we are taking a look at the Chicago Blackhawks being the story of the night as the Chicago Blackhawks have officially won the 2023 NHL Draft Lottery. We're going to take a look and recap the draft lottery heading into the draft this year. And of course the controversy around the Blackhawks winning the lottery. We're going to take a look at all of that today. So Chicago Blackhawks were obviously the big winners last night. Just to recap for some of you guys, make sure to watch the draft lottery uh, live video I did the other night. Really good video. We watched it live in real time. So go back and check that out. And, um, you know, really the sentiment was it came down to the Anaheim Ducks and the Chicago Blackhawks. Connor Bedard was likely going to be going out west. And it came to a point where just... You know, a simple draft lottery, it's kind of frustrating. The NHL can't really do anything right. And this draft lottery was not anywhere different from that either. So a couple of the big storylines were before the commercial break, they got through team 16 to 4. And they left the top three teams at the top. They didn't flip the cards until after a commercial break. That's usually how it's done. Except for the problem that Kevin Weeks, right before they went in, went onto that TV timeout, before Bill Daly even flipped the third card for who would select third overall, he said that the Blue Jackets have the third overall pick. And he was not supposed to say that. So, first of all, a huge mistake there. And then second of all is obviously the major controversy around the Chicago Blackhawks winning the draft lottery. Now... I think there's a lot of reason to believe that it is rigged. Um, there's definitely that sentiment out there. I think a lot of it is just salty fan bases that are upset their team didn't get it. But I think there is something to be said for it. And I have to do an entire video on that. So I'm not going to delve too deep into that today. But I definitely had to mention it. You also can't ignore the fact that literally a year ago, the Blackhawks were in complete and utter turmoil. This is a team that was on the brink of losing their star captain, Jonathan Taze, and Patrick Kane. Both of their contracts were up this summer. They both signed that infamous contract back eight years ago when they signed together to stay in Chicago to be a part of the dynasty. Now both of those players have moved on, and it just so happens in the next draft, they get the first overall pick. You also throw into the mix the whole uh, allegations, the the assault allegations against um, certain members of the old regime in Chicago. And this is where I think there's a lot of frustration from the league. And I don't want to diminish the whole Blackhawks getting a Bedard thing, but I have to mention this. And this is something that maybe a lot of people have forgotten, right? You know, the internet never forgets, but people have very short attention spans. And I think it's important to mention that we do have the Kyle Beach situation that occurred a year ago in Chicago. And yes, Stan Bowman's no longer there. Joel Quenville's no longer there. But a lot of the problems, kind of the Blackhawks as an organization, got off basically scot-free. You know, we're looking at a situation where the Arizona Coyotes lost a first and second round pick in the 2020 NHL draft because they were doing illegal testing of, of prospects, right? So they lose a first and a second for that, but the Blackhawks don't lose anything. They lose basically a GM and a coach that weren't, you know, they were going to fire anyway. And there is a lot of uh, the sentiment of a lack of accountability in Chicago right now. And, you know, again, I'm going to have to probably do an entire video on that now. Uh, and it definitely diminished from the overall draft lottery. But to get to the more positive things for the Blackhawks, um, the Blackhawks did win the draft. Um, the order right now is going to be your top five is the Chicago Blackhawks drafting first overall, the Anaheim Ducks drafting second overall. We're going to get to that in a second. Third overall is the Columbus Blue Jackets, San Jose is drafting fourth, and the Montreal Canadiens for the second consecutive year will be drafting top five. They will be drafting fifth overall. So with that all out of the way, the only team that moved up is the Blackhawks, who moved up two spots from the number three spot up to the number one spot. Um, really good day in Chicago for those fans. You know, this is a sign of a new direction to look at this more on the positive side of things. You know, like I said, you look at the next couple years of drafts, they have an incredible exorbitant amount of draft picks. They have two first round picks this year, four second round picks, and two third round picks. All of those coming from Tampa Bay, the Rangers, Ottawa, and Dallas. Next year, they have 
two first round picks, two second round picks, and two third round picks. Going to 2025, they have two first round picks, two second round picks, and two fourth round picks. So in the top four of the next three years of drafts, the Blackhawks, at the very least, have six first round picks, eight second round picks, and five third round picks. So the Blackhawks are loading up on the prospects and the talent, and they're hoping here with this Connor Bedard pick that they can continue to do that. And you look at some of the young guys on this team that this core is going to be built around. Um, I look specifically at some of the younger players on this team. You know, I look at some of the guys that are maybe more depth but are going to be a part of this team. Uh, Philip Kurashev is a pretty big piece of this team up front. On the back end, I think we're going to see a little bit more from maybe some of the younger guys that really didn't play much this year, like an Alex Vlasic. Um, specifically, younger guys that are really prospects, haven't played in the NHL yet. Kevin Korchinski, Ethan Del Maestro, Nolan Allen are some of the really good defensive prospects. Up front, Lucas Reichel, really good prospect there. Colton Dock, yes, the brother of Kirby Dock. So keep an eye out on some of those guys. And of course, who they could be getting in this year's draft, right? We assume that Connor Bedard would be going first overall to the Blackhawks. That would be a huge pickup for them. In between the pipes, there's some questions about what could be going on there. Uh, but Arvid Soderblom has shown he might be a backup next year. Um, and potentially could become a starter at some point, right? As crazy as that sounds, that could be on the table for him at some point. So, you know, how I look at the Blackhawks right now, this is a team that if they add a guy... Like Connor Bedard, now you've already got Frank Nazar, who you drafted in the first round last year. You have two really good centers to build your core around. And then you add the guys like Kurashev and those other guys I already mentioned earlier. You know, the Blackhawks are starting to build something. And when you add a guy like Bedard, that is your cornerstone piece probably for the next two decades in Chicago and is instantly the replacement to Jonathan Taze. He had his limelight at the end of the season, game 82, his final game in Chicago, got the proper send-off, and now the Blackhawks are starting the new regime with likely a group of Kirby Doc, um, Lucas Reichel, Philip Kurashev, Connor Bedard, and Frank Nazar. That's a really good forward group for the Blackhawks. And they're going to continue to stockpile draft picks. They've already got the draft picks that they have already to either move up or to draft with those selections. A lot of draft capital. A lot of decent prospects already on this team. I think the Chicago Blackhawks are going to be better next season. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, I think it's important to remember the backstory of this franchise right now with the way they handled uh, the Cody Beach situation or the Kyle Beach situation. Um, and I'm definitely not going to be taking away from that. This is, I hate to say it, it's a really sour taste for most fan bases in the NHL. And there's also the argument that this another original six fan, you know, franchise won the first overall pick. Um, you know, just going back to the draft history, um, you know, a lot of people specifically in the last decade, or really the last, really since they redid the draft lottery system, and people are going to be upset, specifically in New York, but it's hard to ignore the bigger markets getting the first overall pick. The second that the Rangers go into a rebuild, they get first and second overall picks in back-to-back -back years. Kind of odd to see that when you see teams like Arizona, who have been tanking for really the past three decades, they have not selected in the top two. Ever. Ever. Yes. Ever. No first or second overall picks in Arizona and they've been trying to do this for a decade so you tell me if that makes any sense and then you look at the Blackhawks going back to that 2020 draft who did they draft right the Blackhawks were not one of the top teams they moved up into the top three similar to what they did this year and they drafted Kirby Doc so you tell me if there's a little bit of a weird system going on here now again there hasn't been evidence of it but when you look at how this has kind of gone, there's reason to believe that the NHL has something to do with this. As, as people will say, you're being a conspiracy theorist and this and that. Call me whatever you want. But the reality is, there is something to be said for it. And you look at even 2005 when Pittsburgh won it, right? Not an original six team, but still one of those franchises that brings in big money for the NHL. 
I don't know. You tell me. Right? Montreal winning last year. It is what it is. But like I said, this isn't to diminish on the Blackhawks winning it because this is a new a new era for them. This is a new regime. And they're trying to forget about the past. I get that. Um, but I don't know. I think at this point it's just kind of word scramble. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you really, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on the Blackhawks winning the draft lottery. I'm going to start doing some mock draft videos as we get ready for the draft because I think it's going to be very interesting, especially in that top five. Because now that Anaheim has that second pick, I think there's really, you know, there's really three guys that they should be looking at. And I think it's going to be really interesting as a Ducks fan. I'm really interested to see what they do there because I think it's pretty a foregone conclusion. We know what the Blackhawks are going to do at number one, but I think at number two, the Ducks have a really interesting decision. And then kind of three and four, you know, it's kind of an easy decision for the Blue Jackets and the Sharks because their decisions are already going to be made ahead of them with what the Blackhawks and the Ducks do at one and two. So guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.